Well, despite the fact that we're in the midst of the NBA offseason, there's been a lot going on uh, pertaining to the Golden State Warriors. Stephen Curry said something kind of interesting pertaining to his all-time ranking. And speaking of all-time rankings, the Warriors have been disrespected. We'll get into that and so much more with Kyla Mills next. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA or enter the promo code locked on NBA for a free white tech hat with any purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. You can follow Kylan Mills on all social media platforms. It's real easy. At her name, Kylan Mills. You can follow me on threads and Instagram at Dog Wild. Kylan, how are you doing? You're in Illinois today. That's a different background. I love your background. By the yes. Way. So I was going to say a little bit different look. You can't actually tell behind me. Uh, there's a Bulls, a framed Bulls picture that's hanging up. There's this guy behind me. We got some Cincinnati Reds gear going on. Yeah, I'm back in the Midwest for a wedding uh, in the Chicago area, but ready to talk some Warriors basketball, ready for the NBA season. I'll tell you what, I enjoy baseball, but like I need something else. Absolutely. I'm totally you? with you. I there is a huge hole in my life. I, 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 I cannot yeah. wait for basketball to start. By the way, you, you're in the suburbs of Chicago, but what's going on? Why, why are the Reds the focus of your parents' fandom? Like, what, like that's not that close, is it? So it's, it's, I was going to say, this is that's my husband has gifted them things because he is uh, a Cincinnati <laughs> fan. So yeah. they, they like to do the gag back and forth. My parents will give him like Cubs jerseys and like Bulls items. Then he'll give them, you know, like a framed Cubs. Pit. So it's just a little, you know, back and forth joke they've got going <laughs> i love it no that's 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 so, it gets, so this gets <laughs> relegated to the basement they're not going to hang it up upstairs we've got a ton of bull stuff upstairs but the red stuff basement <laughs> oh, i love it i absolutely love it uh so so kylan's in illinois i'm here in the the bay area um starting the show off uh andre Igadala was a guest on a show i'm trying to remember which show it is i uh I can't remember what show it is. I'm actually trying to look right now, see if I could, if, if there's any clues here from the clip, but we'll find out when we watch it. Regardless, uh, this clip kind of made the rounds, and it, it's definitely something that you and I should be talking about, I think, uh, for a number of yeah. reasons. One is it touched on um, the subject of Stephen Curry's final MVP trophies. Uh, Andre Iguodala won one at the beginning of the Warriors dynasty. Some people think Steph should have gotten uh, uh, the finals MVP trophy that year. So Andre touched on that, but there was also something else in this clip and it's full of nuggets. Anyways, we're going to play this for you right now. This is Andre Iguodala. He also has his, um, his own shows co-host, uh, what Evan Fournier, is that his, I believe his co-host. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. so they're in, they're in this clip together. Here is Andre Iguodala. Any day now. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, it the, is loading. I just got, I got a loading. Oh my God. Well, okay. Hold on a second here. Let me hit the refresh button. Uh, let's, oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Steph deserved, I always say like, yeah, like Steph deserved, I think he did deserve one before the one he got. Yeah. Right. I, thought, I did think he deserved one. So I always say like, if it was mine, like, cool. I know the impact I had on the game, but I don't need anyone to tell me that that I did, right. like I'm cool with that because my whole career was based on that. I never made a first team or a defensive team. It's crazy. I think I made- You won. My, you my won. first one was in Golden State. 2014, mm -hmm. I don't want to say. 20, the 13, 14 season, yeah. right? First time, right? <laughs> I researched right here. The only mind. reason I made the Olympic team in 2012 is because Kobe Bryant was like, this is the best defender in the league, period. And I never made an all-defensive first team. And then I say Drew Holiday is the best defender in the league the last 10 to 15 years. Drew just got like a first-team defensive team like yeah, two years even ago. Even Lucas said this. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just like, and KD every, said it. Yeah, and every team he's been on has been top five defensively. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's, so like, that's a... Because it's the, it's the matrix that they're picking. Like, what is it? Like, so, what are y'all determining? Yeah, so I say all that to say, like, 
man, I really don't even, I don't even care. Like, yeah, Steph should have had mine. Like, I don't really care. Like, mm -hmm. I think Steph should have had it. But yeah. then I'm yeah. talking to Trevor Reza. He was like, bro, you bugging. Yeah. Like, don't ever say that ever again. And once Trevor said that to me, he kind of checked me. He was like, yo, dog, like, you I, we were in Houston and we knew if you played well, y'all were going to beat us. Period. But the average fan who argues with all our opinions every day, they don't know what the best players in the world are saying. Like, and Trevor, when Trevor said that, he was like, Dre, I'm in Houston and we can't get past y'all because you. And I'm like, man, Steph is cooking. He was like, no, bro, if you're having a good game, we, we can't win. So uh, to me, there was a lot <clears throat> to unpack there. Um, I, I want to save the really good stuff for last. I want to start off first with this commentary regarding Stephen Curry's uh, uh, finals MVP trophies. Again, Steph has won. Um, he earned that in 2022. And I think he easily earned that. I think there was no doubting that one. Yeah. Um, but do, do you, th in, my, in your opinion, Kylan, and I'll open this up to the chat if anyone has opinions on this as well. Is one finals MVP trophy justifiable? Is it fair? Do you think he should have more? Are there other of the four championships? Are, are there any others where you feel like Steph got robbed? What are your thoughts on that angle? Let's start with the finals MVPs. I mean, I think that Steph should have gotten it the year that Andre got it. Like, I'm sorry, but I know Andre played well, uh, you know, in that singular, in the singular deciding game. But I still think overall Steph was the most impactful player. I mean, to me, it was kind of crazy that Andre won in that particular year, because if you looked at the playoffs and the finals in the big picture, to me, Steph was the uh, most impactful player. So I think. He de I agree with Andre. I think he definitely should have earned more than the one, or at least the first time that he earned that one. But I think that, honestly, Andre's year was a year that it seemed like it should have been Steph. Yeah, I, I like, a lot. again, Rebel the Sounds in the chat is, is agreeing with you as well with those sentiments. Actually, he's he or she, I don't, I don't know your gender, sorry. Uh, you're saying both 2015 and 18. That was uh, Kevin Durant's second finals MVP that Steph should have wanted that, that year as well. Um, I, I look, I, I get it. it I, I'm still relieved to no end that Steph won in 2022, just to end that, that stupid critique that so many people as haters had that he never won one. Um, every time I think back to 2015 though, I, 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 I still remember clearly enough why Andre Iguodala won that finals MVP. Um, I, he, I mean, what he was doing to LeBron, I mean, LeBron James was so damn good. That yeah. what Iguodala was doing, um, I, I I can't for I just I don't know I I I understand why the voters voted the way they did. I do you remember did Steph get more votes or did LeBron? Because LeBron was doing so well too. I, I didn't look. I I guess I could look it up for fairly easily, but um, LeBron was just killing it. I, I I don't know. I yeah. So you think two two is the magic number for for uh, Finals MVPs? The I, I think it's harder to argue against Kevin Durant's Finals MVPs than it is that Andre Iguodala year. That to me, uh, you know, in 2015 was was crazy. Um, KD though, that's you know that's tougher to argue with. So that's why I say two because I think that 2015 should have been Steph's, but like the KD years. You said you think the second KD year should have been Steph. Well, Rebel the Sounds in our chat did. Okay, I, Rebel. I mean, numbers wise, I get why Kevin Durant won. Steph had one bad game in that right. series. The problem is Kevin Durant had zero bad games. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, but regardless, I thought there was a lot of nuggets in there. First of all, I love the fact that Andre Iguodala brought up Kobe Bryant vouching for him to be on the 2012 Olympic team. Um, you know, that. Because Iguodala, I, it's easy to forget Iguodala was on that team. He was definitely the the at the end of the bench. I can't remember if they had college players on that team or not, but I do remember Iguodala was like clearly <laughs> like the like the persona non grata of that whole group. Meaning, like he he had the least superstar uh, aura around him, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was uh, but it was cool that Kobe recognized his defense. I mean, he's this, he's this phenomenal defensive player. But what the two, there were two things that really stuck out, and I want to talk about this extensively on, on the show. And the first part is the disrespect that Andre Iguodala, like I didn't know until he, he said that in the clip, that he's never earned one first-team all-NBA defensive uh, nods. Crazy. He's, ne he's never been on the first team. That's crazy. crazy. Did you know that? No, I didn't know until, you know, we talked about that clip ahead of this. I think it's insanity. Um it's wild. He he pointed out all of the right things to. I just I can't. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. So I decided uh, when we come back from this break, 
I'm going to go through every first and second team, all NBA defensive team from 2015, the first year the Warriors won the title, to the present day. Because I want us to examine who got picked over Andre Iguodala. And to me, it's not just the all NBA defensive teams that, that I want to examine. It's also the defensive player of the year awards. I still maintain that Draymond Green got robbed. I mean, for him to only have one defensive player of the year award and for Rudy Gobert to have three, I mean, that just rep- – like, like, to me, there's like a, a really huge issue that the NBA has with their voting system. I mean, we, 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 get, we saw an example of it this last year when Mark Jack- Jackson, now formerly of ESPN, uh, left Nikola Jokic out of the top five for the MVP voting – and then he had to apologize for that. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, there's, I think there's just there's a lot of lazy voting. There's a lot of people that I don't think study the game enough to be voting on these things. And then there's a lot of people that just don't get a vote, period. I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. The Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area, the fourth largest media market in the country, we get one vote total for all the NBA awards. And, it, and they take turns between the San Francisco Chronicle and and the San Jose Mercury News for that award. You could have a separate uh, yeah. debate about whether or not those two organizations should be considered to be the most prestigious of everyone here in the Bay Area to, to get that vote. I mean, that's a whole other discussion, but it's crazy. The whole system to me just it needs a revamp, in my opinion. But um, yeah, we'll talk about the teams themselves and who's on those. Uh, anything you want to add before we go to break, uh, Kylan? No, I mean, I agree with you. The whole system and the fact that the Bay Area only gets one vote is something we've talked about before. Uh, I think it's ridiculous. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be another way. Um, the fact that it just rotates between those two organizations, I just, I agree with you. I think there should be a new system. I, I, yeah, I'm totally with you. By the way, Chico, great call uh, pointing out that Anthony Davis was the college player in that 2012 Olympic team completely forgot about that. Yeah. Was he at Kentucky? Was that his, his alma mater? I, uh, yeah, he went, yeah, he went to Kentucky. That's, that's incredible. Good stuff. Thank you, Chico. Uh, so when we come, so we're going to uh, delve into those, those all NBA uh, defensive teams in just a moment. Got to give some love first to uh, one of our sponsors and that's bird dogs. They're all about men's clothing. Uh, Kylan, I actually have some clothes here that um, I got for Charlie. Uh, so let him know and they should fit him. I, I hope large is a good size for him. Um, so tell him I have some pants and I have some shirts, uh, waiting for him. Um, it's the least I could do for never shipping you, uh, those, uh, build bars. Um, but bird dogs are, they're, they're awesome clothing. If, if you are of the male, uh, if male clothing is what you like, they're all about two things, style and comfort. And those are really the only two things that matter, right? I mean, you, you want to look good, you want to feel good. And especially in the post pandemic days, when all of us, I feel like are focusing a little more on comfort, even though we're out of it, like a lot of us still like to be lazy and stay at home and chill, but we want to look good doing it. And that's what bird dogs is all about. And they're also giving away like a ton of freebies now, uh, before they were giving away the, the awesome bird dogs tumbler. Now they're gifting a free, a white hat, um, that you get free with your purchase. Um, again, I have bird dog clothes. I absolutely love them. And now you can order them too. It's super easy. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA and enter the promo code locked on NBA for a free white tech hat with your purchase. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA, or I'm sorry, use the promo code locked on NBA. You can do one or the other, either go to the website, birddogs.com slash locked on NBA, or enter the promo code Locked on NBA for a free white tech hat. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show is Scotty Farrell. I don't know if you're familiar with him, Kylan. I think you, you told me last last time we recorded that you, you uh, he's, he's a name that is not uh, someone you're familiar with. He is a broadcasting legend. He does not sound like a broadcaster. He has the roughest voice you will ever hear, but it's so distinct. And the dude is all about just fun. I, I, I He's a huge reason why I got into broadcasting. So I'm ecstatic. Scotty Farrell, is going to join the program tomorrow. But right now, Kylan Mills is joining me. You can follow her on all social media platforms at Kylan Mills. Um, yay, hello. How's it going? So uh, here we go. These are the these are all the previous uh, 
Uh, oh, by the way, Bruce Morrow is showing some love for bird dogs real fast. I'm sure the, spo- the sponsor uh, will love this. <laughs> bird dogs feels like clothes for vets. I don't know what that means exactly. Do you understand what that means, Kylan? I-, I think he means like veterinarians because of the name bird dogs. That's what go. I would assume, which I can see it. Thank bird you. dogs. Some company that scrubs. Right. Not scrubs, though. They're stylish people. <laughs> yeah, they look good. They actually do legit look good. Um, so here are all the the, the, the all NBA defensive teams from, and we're going to go back to, we'll go back to actually 2013 14 because Andre Iguodala was on the Warriors that year as well. That Warriors team was good. Um, here is the first team uh, Joakim Noah, who actually won the Defensive Player of the Year award that season. Paul George, we're going back 10 years now, Uh, Chris Paul of the Golden State Warriors, Serge Ibaka, a big who, by the way, is still out there. And look at this name. They were wrong. Andre Iguodala was on the first team in 2013-14. Didn't they just say on that that show that he never made a first team? I thought they said he only made it once. That's the one time. Okay, that's – well, once is still – that, it's not enough. So Iguodala One definitely is not enough. He's one of the best defenders in the league, even now, 37, 38. If he could ever play when he did, he was still a great defender, even though he didn't have the same speed, Uh, you know, great hands, great reaction, good instincts in the right place at the right time. So like he's still an elite defender and there is absolutely no way he should have been on the all defensive team once, but that's got to be the one year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I thought they meant first team he never made it, but I guess maybe this oh. is the only t- time he's made a period. Yeah. So he was yeah. on the 2013-14 first team. Serge Ibaka, by the way, still available. I, I saw some snippet where, where he did an interview recently where he still wants to play. Like, he's not retired. Is that is Serge Ibaka, in your opinion, washed, by the way? Like, would you be, would you be like, I'm not hearing his name uttered anywhere. Like, it sounds like he's done, but I, I don't know. I wouldn't mind him back on the Warriors. What are your thoughts on Ibaka before we move on? I mind him i mean as a player to bring in on a vet minimum to fill like a last roster spot like why not as for whether he's washed i mean maybe could he contribute a few minutes maybe Absolutely. i don't know spot minutes maybe Absolutely. uh better he could probably play more than andre guadala last season so <laughs> what happened last? i, I don't know <laughs> i don't know uh, yeah so like what do you define wash i mean i don't know if he, i don't uh, I don't, I mean, Wash, I guess just me, like the corner three is not falling anymore. He can't play defense yeah. anymore. I don't know, but he's still out there. Um, yeah. And Bruce Morrow was saying that Friday clip, uh, which we haven't played in a while because Iguodala. Yeah, Cyrus, you didn't have it ready. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have it ready right now. Um, and David Bowens, thank you very much. Your, your set, Kylan, is, is getting a lot of fans. I like it too. The background is solid. All right, um, well, I'll, to, I'll set up something similar back at my house because this is like stick on bricks. It's like a wallpaper. You know what I'm saying? And it actually looks really good. I, yeah, I, that's wallpaper? Yeah. Wow, Isn't that, that cool? Look like wallpaper. Does it look that cool? Good. Okay, that, good. Yeah. Like, All right. I'm going to have to get the same stuff. <laughs> absolutely. Um, uh, Douglas Mike's right as adds to the sentiments of Serge Ibaka being washed, uh, adding the word you should take a look at Usman Garuba. I'm not that familiar with him, but maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll save that for a future show. Um, but nonetheless, so that first team was, uh, yeah, Serge Ibaka made the first team. Second team was LeBron James back when he played defense, Patrick Beverly, Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, and Roy Hibbert of the Pacers. I wonder what Roy Hibbert is doing these days. I'm a little surprised that nearly all of these players from 2013-14 making the first and second, uh, all NBA defensive teams are still in the league, like still going strong. It's, is that surprising yeah. to you or... No, that's very surprising. I mean, yeah, it's 10 years ago. All right. 2014 15. This was the year the Warriors won the title. The Warriors won 67 games that season. Uh, Kawhi yeah. Leonard was on the first team, I think, well deserved. Draymond Green made the first team. Tony Allen made the first team. DeAndre Jordan and Chris Paul round out the first team. Any issues there, Kylan? I mean, how crazy is it that Chris Paul was, did you say he was first team all defensive? Yeah. <sighs> That's wild to me. Mm-hmm. Like, not that he's a bad defender, but one of the best, like the best, uh, his position in the league. Do you think that? Like, I'm trying Chris to remember. Paul was. He was. I, I don't was know if he, he is the now. Was he the best in the league? He was known for that. Like, he. I mean, yeah. I know he's a great defender, but still. Yeah, he was. I mean, he led the league in steals, I think, a number of years. I'm, I'm, 
I just don't I, look if he if he resembles his old self defensively. The Warriors are stoked on that front. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's it, yeah it's it's weird. Second none team, of them, none of them are as egregious as Rudy Gobert being a three time. Uh, that's crazy. And, yeah, that's crazy. So, uh, I'll say that. The, and then the second team again. This is the year the Warriors won the title. Anthony Davis. This is back when he's on the Pelicans. Jimmy Butler again. Andrew Bogut made the team John Wall that's a player I've never associated with defense he made second team all defense and then Tim Duncan rounded out the the five I feel like it could uh, Andre Iguodala could have should have made it over Duncan maybe over John Tim Wall. Duncan yeah that's a that's a little weird um yeah all right so moving on uh 20 6, 15 16 this is the year the Warriors won 73 games all right the all NBA teams, first team, Kawhi Leonard, once again, Draymond Green, DeAndre Jordan, Avery Bradley made the first team with the Celtics and Chris Paul, once again. I don't know about I, Avery Bradley as, as a first team. What's the yeah. stick out to you? That was the first name. I was about to look up Avery Bradley's stats from that year. Like, really? First team? <laughs> First team. I, I mean, I know he was a good defender, but that's and then the yeah, second he's another team. one that he was known to be a good defender. Like I get it, but over Igadala, that's crazy. That's insane to me. And then the second team has as some head scratchers. Paul Millsap, like he was, he was in the Hawks. Then I do not remember Paul Millsap as being like a defensive savant ever. I know he was a good rebounder for his size, uh, you know, solid post up game, but I did not really think of him as a tremendous defensive player paul george hassan whiteside tony allen and jimmy butler round out the second team in 2015 16 what are your any thoughts uh i still think andre Godal should have been in there in, in the mix somewhere i i just i was trying to look up just now every bradley stats uh from that year he did average one and a half steals per game uh three rebounds per game. I just, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, that is weird. To, that is weird to me. I, it, Andre Iguodala, in my opinion, and I, and I've got this, this list uh, visible now. Um, if so, hopefully for the YouTube viewers, this makes things a little easier. Avery Bradley is not better than Andre Iguodala was not that season. Paul Millsap was not better than Andre Iguodala. I don't. I can't remember if you have to select a center. If that's the case, fine. Hassan Whiteside. Yeah. If not, that's criminal as well. Um, mm -hmm. Moving on. 2016-17. This was Kevin Durant's first. Is Hassan first Whiteside still available? Side note. Yes. Not retired. Probably out of the league though, because he's slow and he's a liability offensively. And but yeah. I, if the Warriors randomly added him, I wouldn't hate it. He's he's tough. I remember. Yeah, I remember at some point he was like his name was floating around on the list of possible free agent signings. I'm like, I don't remember him ever getting signed. Definitely slow. Um, I don't time. know. I just was thinking, I'm like, where did he ever end up? I mean, I wouldn't hate it. At this point, like, what are the Warriors going to do with the last roster spot? It's not going to be a high quality player. Sorry, but no, you're absolutely right. And, and Rebel the Sounds writes, and this is this is really the whole point of us doing this. Rebel the Sounds writes, a lot of politics go into these awards and all NBA team picks. That's ridiculous. Politics should not be interjecting itself in terms of award selections for just who's the best defensive player. Like it's a really cut and dry selection. I think I, it, I agree with you, Rebel the Sounds. I just, but my point is it's, it's insane. If that's true, um, that that's what's playing into some of these players being selected. Um, 2016, 17 Draymond Green, again, Rudy Gobert, uh, makes his debut. Kawhi Leonard again. Chris Paul again. Patrick Beverly. He was on the Rockets that season. Uh, second team, Tony Allen, who uh, Stephen Curry recently said was one of the toughest defenders he's ever faced. Danny Green of the Danny Green got picked over Andre Iguodala. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Andre Roberson. I don't know if you folks remember him. He had no offensive game, but he was a defense, de a decent defender. And then Anthony Davis of the Pelicans. Your thoughts, Kyler? Uh, I mean, I just still every everyone on these lists. I'm like, I still think that Andre could be on the list over Roberson. Like he was a good defender too. Like I do remember that specifically was what he was good at. But like, still, Andre was better every single year than at least one of these guys on the list. Same thing. Absolutely, 
Absolutely. And I'm, I'm sorry. Look, Patrick Beverly is a great defender. He's not better than Iguodala. Um, that, I would take some issue with that as well. I would move Patrick Beverly's second team, get Roberson out of there, get Iguodala on there. That, that's insane. I, this is ridiculous. 2017-18, uh, first team, Rudy Gobert, Anthony Davis, Victor Oladipo. I, <laughs> look, he's good. But all NBA first team, Drew Holiday getting his love. And Robert Covington of the 76ers. Second team, Joel Embiid, Draymond Green, Al Horford, DeJounte Murray, and Jimmy Butler. Your thoughts, Kylan? That's an interesting one. Uh, I don't hate any of the names on that list. I mean, is there any one that stands out to you that doesn't belong? So those were all great defenders. I to, Well, in terms of uh, whether or not Iguodala should have been like not should have not made the team. Victor Oladipo, I think, is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I think Al Horford is a little much. I think DeJounte mm. Murray is a little much. I, I would put Iguodal over those three. I, would you agree with that, or do you think it's fair the way it is? Uh, I think it's fair the way it is. This is probably of the years, one that I don't hate. Uh, Chico just commented Oladipo led the league in steals that year, so that's why I figured there'd got, there had to be a reason. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I'm not mad about any of these of, of the years that we, we've looked at, but... Yes, just to just uh and just to add to that, Stephen Curry led the NBA in steals not too long ago. He did not make the any all no. defensive team. Um if that's if that is a criteria. Um 2018-19. This was the last year of Kevin Durant's tenure with the Golden State Warriors. First team that season, Rudy Gobert again. Uh Paul George is back. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Marcus Smart making his first appearance. Eric Bledsoe, what, what, what? And then second team, Drew Holiday, Clay Thompson. That's another player I, I feel like is not has not gotten his due defensively. Joel Embiid, Draymond Green, Kawhi Leonard. Your thoughts? Uh, I almost, I mean, looking at the second team list, I get it. Maybe Bledsoe, I feel like, is kind of questionable. Um. Glad to see, honestly, Clay. I think Clay hasn't gotten necessarily his shine for his defensive work. Marcus Smart, I do think, is a good defender. Giannis is a great defender. Um, I don't know. I know your feelings about Rudy Gobert. Like, I get him being all defensive team, but like Same. being the M defensive MVP is is insane to me. Um, so that's why, like, I guess if I had to pick an odd man out, I'd say Eric Blood. So I, I'd have to, you know, look at really his numbers when he did that season, but. Joel Embiid. I mean, you know, we love Draymond. I think Kawhi Leonard is a great defender. So I don't know. I think Bledsoe would have to be the odd man out if we were going to put in Andre into the mix. And, it, well, and seeing Clay on here does make me wonder if, if part of the reason why Iguodala didn't make more teams is because he was just a victim of the, the Warriors' success. I mean, there was just, I mean, you already have Draymond Green. I, I didn't even think about Clay. I mean, Clay Thompson, Rick Buecher brought this up when he was on the show two weeks ago about how the Warriors been missing from Clay, even though his offense has regressed somewhat, but he used yeah. to be their primary on the ball defender defensively. Yep. Like yep. He was, mm -hmm. and, and they've lost that. And, and that's, and that's, anyway, but to, to see him on here, it, maybe that's why uh, mm -hmm. 2020 uh, or 2019, 2020, I don't think Iguodala was on the Warriors that season. Um, sorry about the, about Bubba. Uh, Rudy Gobert, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Anthony Davis. This is when he went to the Heat, I think. Correct? Are, are you looking at, is this year 1920? Yes, correct. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So now, yes, Andre was now on the Heat. Yeah. Correct. Um, after initially traded to the Grizzlies, I had no interest in playing for the Grizzlies. Uh, they eventually traded him to the Heat, and the Heat made, to the, made it to the NBA Finals that year. So uh, second team, Brooke Lopez, Kawhi Leonard, Bam Adebayo. Uh, Patrick Beverly and Eric Bledsoe again. I I have no memory of Eric Bledsoe being this good defensively. <laughs> That's bizarre to me. No dream on Green, but this is also a horrible Warrior season. So yeah, this was a really surprising. really bad year. So that didn't help their cause at all. I mean, the rest of the names on this list aren't a surprise to me. Bam Adebayo is a great big uh, in terms of defensive big. You know, Pat Beverly not a surprise again. I think like maybe and Brooke Lopez as well. Uh. Eric Bledsoe, probably the big surprise from these last two seasons. Like, yeah, I agree. Was he one of the best in the NBA? Like, he's a good defender, but absolutely. But I think she this was was this year or the following year. I mean, I feel like this is where 
Andre really started to regress in terms of his minutes starting to deal with injuries because his first year in Miami, he didn't play very much. Correct. Like he was out for quite a bit. So I don't know that I could make an argument for Andre being on this list just because I'm pretty sure he was out a lot this year. But oh, yeah. his second year in Miami, I think he played a majority of games. So agreed. I, at this point, I, Iguodala is no longer on the table. I'm just, I'm just reading yeah. his office to, yeah. just to see who they picked. I, I don't think many people memorize these lists. Um, Chico, by the way, is correct that Iguodala was also snubbed multiple times when he was playing for the 76ers. Uh, do agree with you there. Uh, and then Chico also, Chico seems some good stuff tonight. Uh, like adding Clay Thompson was definitely a better defender in his prime than Danny Green. The Danny Green choice was really bizarre. Mm -hmm. um, moving on, uh, 2020, 2021. This was the year uh, the Warriors were 39 and 33. Uh, Stephen Curry, in my humble opinion, should have won MVP this season. But we're talking about defense. Rudy Gobert, Ben Simmons again. My, has he fallen? Uh, Draymond Green was on the first team uh, all defensive list. Drew Holiday and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Second team, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Joel Embiid, Matisse Thibel, uh, and Kawhi Leonard. Uh, any thoughts on that list? It seems worthy to me. What do you What do you think? That I was going to say, I think this is a fair list. One of the most fair lists of the ones that we've seen. Um, like looking on here, I don't think there's any name that was someone non-deserving. But I agree. Like, how crazy is it that Ben Simmons only this like this was not long ago. He was one no. of the best defenders in the league. Now he is a non-existent, non-factor. It's just the whole saga is wild. And now you've got the Harden situation, like going crazy day in and day out there's something new like do you think james harden is going to literally show up at training camp and just be no. toxic af you I don't, don't think, think he's, he's going to show up i don't think he's gonna show up. he said he's not going to i i i can't see him showing up i i think he's just gonna hold really out. I, that's my guess so, i could be wrong i don't know I, so with the new with the new cba what i read is that he has to show up and he has to play in order to obtain free agency after this year like there is a contingency that like he can't like not show up and not play Good point. So that's You're the right. only thing that would be possibly a hook. But dude, You're like right. how crazy, how crazy will it be if he does show up and just like, I just feel like he, I could totally see him just like being toxic and dramatic until he forces them to trade him. Like You're this could be, I mean, like, uh, uh, Kevin McHale uh, came out recently, his former coach at Houston and said that James Harden has mastered the art of forcing his way off teams. Like he'll gain weight. So you're right. I, I didn't think about the fact that the new under the new CBA, you can't just sit out and then yeah. and then still be a free agent the following season. They'll hold on yes. to his rights. Um, yep. So maybe he will. You're right. I, it's whatever it is. It's an absolute feces show. I'm all in. Give him the popcorn. It's it's fascinating. I, I don't <laughs> do you know think what they'll actually? Do. do you think they'll trade him? Do you think yeah, they'll more like so. what? We're, how do you think it's going to play out? You think he's going to be successful? They're going to give him up. I think they're going to give him up. I don't know. I mean. You can't keep them. I mean, it, ah, I don't know. It's uh, I haven't put that much thought into it. What do you think? I've, I haven't put that much thought into it all. I mean, just from it's from just... from grazing the surface, yes, I think they'll trade them. I don't see how you can keep a poison pill like that on your team. Um, but I don't know. Daryl Morey's weird. What do you think? He's totally weird. I think the only choice <laughs> at this point is to trade Harden. Like, I think you have to because you cannot have someone like that who's a cancer show up to training camp. Like, I think it's going to be, you know, detriment to the whole team. If he shows up and he doesn't want to be there. Like to me, James Harden has shown through his career. And you mentioned past actions, forcing his way out of teams that he can be toxic. Uh -huh. And if he doesn't want to be there, like, I just think it's going to absolutely, it, it literally is going to spread like cancer to the whole team. And it's going to be a disaster. Now I'm even seeing articles with people speculating about like whether or not there's so much unrest and unhappiness and discontent that Joel Embiid could ask out and try to force yeah. his way out. Yeah. That's what there was some articles speculating. Like I don't, nothing is materialized, but that there is concern that James Harden could create an environment that's so toxic, you know, that like meme or like gif or whatever, like I'm going to make this so toxic. Uh -huh. that you literally could like force the team apart. I don't know. It could, it could be a disaster. So I feel like you have to trade him. I feel like trading him is better than risking him coming in and like ruining the team this whole year and like creating an awful environment. Totally. Uh, and, and we're reading the chat, Matt DeLeo. I, I, we were reading your sentiments on Danny green. Totally feel you. Um, Kylan, have you ever been a poison pill, a toxic pill in an organization? Have you ever been in a position where you want out and they won't let you out. And you're like, you're going to pay a price for this. No, I haven't. But I will say that 
in working in news, especially in local news, you do have to sign contracts. You typically sign a two-year contract. Right. Some people sign a three-year contract. And like I know and have heard horror stories of stations not letting people out. I actually have a personal related mm. horror story of my husband who was under contract and I got the job to move to the Bay Area to work at Cron. And he wanted to leave and I was going to leave before him, but he wanted to get out of his contract six weeks early. It was a three-year contract six weeks early. And they initially said yes, and then changed their minds. Like as time was coming up where he'd already like packed all our stuff, he was moving cross country to live with me in San Francisco. And the boss was like, ah, you know what? Never mind. Like I never got anyone hired, basically like dragged his feet. Charlie had given them like months, months advance notice. And they wouldn't let, they like literally said no and Charlie said, I don't care then. I'm going. And they like threatened him. His <laughs> boss called him. His boss called him the day he was moving, like moving truck, like pulling out of the driveway. And it was like, hey, so you sure you aren't coming to work today? And Charlie's like, no, I've been telling you for months. Like, I'm trying to move on this day. Our lease is up. I don't have somewhere to live. My wife has already moved cross country. Like, I'm moving. And he was like, <laughs> okay, well, you know, our lawyers are going to be calling you then. Like, you're going to owe us. Like, blah, blah, blah. Nothing ever happened. Literally nothing uh, happened. But that's my story about yeah, that's a good having story. to deal with bad contracts. Um, yeah. but anyway, so in the in the news world, in the sports world, in broadcasting and TV, like there are things like that that oh, happen. Yeah. Um, and I've heard so many stories that are 10 times worse than that. But that was our one bad run in. That Charlie gave them like three plus months notice. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, you just need to leave six. It's like six weeks out of a three year deal. <laughs> and I'm giving you advance notice. Like you can hire someone else. You can figure out an alternative schedule. And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. Like we'll post the job. We'll be on top of it. Well, then they didn't do that. They dragged their feet. They didn't have someone hired. And they're like, oh, wait, never mind. We need you to stay those last six weeks. And he's like, too bad. Like I don't have anywhere to live at this point. So anyways, <laughs> you didn't know what you were getting into, Cyrus, but that's my rant. <laughs> oh, no, it's a good rant. It's a good rant. I just, my last year at KNBR, I was that person. Uh, I had a horrible boss, just an absolute nincompoom you know the the epitome of incompetence someone who just clearly looked out for himself would lie directly to your face and i'd been there almost 10 years at this point i was like i want out just just let me go but i was but i told them i'm like i'm not going to give you the gratification of quitting um so if, you know like i at least want some unemployment maybe a little severance like just you know and and they wouldn't do it he was like nope and so and i was the creative director for the station and so for and i told i warned him i was like if you do not let me go, you're just going to have this disgruntled employee who's just going to be bad mouthing you, who's going to be dragging morale down, and he's going to be doing the bare minimum, <laughs> just enough. And he kept me around for a year after that. It was crazy. So, yeah, so that's my, I did that. Um, I thanks, love man. this. We're getting some good, like, late Wednesday night stories here on the pod. Like, this is going deeper least, than that. It Monday. It's Monday, right? <laughs> Oh, what day right? is it? It's Sunday. Yeah, know. Monday. I don't know why I was thinking Wednesday. It's, it's a good Monday. Yeah. It um, it's, it's that kind of day. It feels weird. This yeah, whole day feels weird that's to me. all right. Uh, <laughs> Cyrus uh, yeah. is James Harden. That's what Bruce Morrow just yeah, said. Yeah, minus the beard, and I, and I wasn't uh, I wasn't chubby, but uh, I guess <laughs> I don't know. I I don't I I I feel like I was bringing more to the table than Harden. I wasn't like I was cool with everyone else. I just it was more management that I was kind of like I had my fill. Um, all right. Yeah. And then, uh, are we, are we ready to move on? Are we ready to move on? Um, in terms or do you want to finish up real quick defensive player, the, uh, defensive, all NBA defensive teams. So Let's, move Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right.